This is a completely different way to look at the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I mean, we have all seen and heard countless reviews and long-term reviews of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Whenever I have looked at it in the past, I've compared it to other phones like the S21 Ultra and the regular iPhone 12. But today, I want to talk about what it represents in isolation. I mean, yes, it's important to compare it to other phones to know where it stands and how much better or worse it is. But for someone buying this today, this will likely be the only device. So let's look at how the experience will be. When I first got my hands on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it felt huge and unwieldy and also heavy at 228 grams. I'd been using the regular iPhone 12 for a few weeks and compared to its 163 grams, this was positively a heavy weight. But now as I hold it, I don't find it heavy or big. My eyes have adjusted to the larger display and the original Apple leather cover I have on it has started to age nicely. If you've only ever looked at the display of the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it will not feel large in any way. It will feel just right. If you're coming from the Android world, then there is absolutely no adjustment necessary in terms of the display's physical size. A lot of other parameters, yes, but more on this later. Now, it's only telling that this year, the iPhone 12 family has crossed the 100 million sales mark, which means it is a blockbuster of the proportions last seen back in 2014 with the iPhone 6. Many people attribute this success to factors like favorable contract deals in certain countries, but personally I feel that it's down to two things. First, the increased appetite for everything electronic in the lockdown times, and second, the new design. Well, new in one way and a homage to the angular iPhones of old, like the 4 and 5. How does it feel in the hand? Very nice and premium. We know it's a fingerprint magnet, but for a device that costs so much, there is nothing that looks more premium. At least the glossy sides offer a good grip. In any case, most people will be using some sort of case with this phone, and so I've been using the original Apple leather case since day one. If you ask me, the black color would be my last choice for this case. I was more drawn towards the California poppy color, but having read and heard horror stories of how those cases age, I decided that the black would be the safest option. The reason is simple. You can go for any color of the leather case, but underneath it will be black. So once this starts to wear, you will find that the black part shows through. Now that's not a problem with the black case as it simply looks well aged. It adds minimal weight to the iPhone and gives it all round protection. The feel in hand is much better than the silicone case as well, even though the silicone case is available in more colors. Now it's a sad fact that a USB Type-C connector is nowhere on the horizon, even for future iPhones. This is probably the biggest criticism in terms of design and functionality. The USB Type-C port is so useful for every device that it comes on that it makes the iPhone feel at least five years behind the times. And Apple is being bullheaded about this. Instead of giving in, they are planning to go completely portless. Back when the iPhone 12 family launched, I was surprised to find that the color science used for this year's iPhones made them look decidedly more yellow than the iPhone 11 series from the year before. I understand that these are warmer displays than the cooler LCD panels of your. However, they were a bit too warm for most people's liking. Fortunately, the added brightness of the Pro model makes them appear a little less yellow and this problem is not as glaring as with the regular 12. Everything else about the display is superb. We've all got used to the notch by now, so it does not feel intrusive in any way. There are plans to reduce its size in the next gen iPhones, so that's still a welcome move. The display is rich, vibrant and fairly power efficient in combination with the A14 chip. The display size is larger this year and this makes all kinds of content consumption a joy. Not only does Netflix or YouTube videos look superb on the screen with perfect blacks, but you can do a lot of reading on the screen as well. It fits a lot of vertical content or alternatively you can have the text sizes a bit bigger if your eyesight is less than perfect. In any case, as we go through the years and our reliance on technology keeps on increasing, we keep gravitating towards bigger screens. 
Case in point, the spectacular failure of the iPhone 12 mini, a phone that was so awaited and yet failed to catch on. A lot of blame is actually put on the battery life of that phone, and whilst there is a lot of truth to that, I feel that even the display size is no longer adequate in 2021, because we are more and more reliant for all kinds of tasks on our smartphones, and we are in some cases using them even in place of traditional laptops and computers. The bigger the screen, the more useful the device. So the iPhone 12 Pro Max gets a full score in this regard. In terms of performance, there is further good news. Well, let's just say that this will be the shortest section of this video. If you want the highest performing smartphone in the world, this is it. It is as snappy as the day of launch. 6 GB of RAM is more than enough for iPhones and most apps remain in memory. There are certain apps that have not been optimized for iPhones and iOS and they keep refreshing no matter how many or how few apps you have running in the background. A prime example is the OLX app. Not only does it refresh every time you leave the app and come back to it, it also does not deliver any notifications when you receive a message within the app. I was hoping that the extra 2GB of RAM on the Pro Max over the regular 12 would help with this, but sadly it does not. But I would not blame the phone for this, rather the app's developers need to work on this to find a fix. It's almost pointless trying to even show you how quickly and smoothly apps open and switch between each other. And even if you plan to do intensive tasks like gaming or video editing or photo editing on this phone, it will handle it like a champ. This is the current performance champion in the smartphone world, at least till September when the iPhone 12s or 13 launches. In terms of the cameras, we know that the physical size of the sensor is bigger this year, exclusively with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. That means more light can get in and as a result, the pictures come out cleaner under most lighting conditions. One surprising thing with the telephoto camera is that its aperture is slightly lesser than the regular Pro. And that means that slightly lesser light comes through even though it offers a 65mm equivalent focal length instead of the regular Pro's 52mm them iPhone photos have been getting more and more vibrant over the years, and this is still the most reliable phone for capturing great photographs. In fact, everybody should take some time to learn the aesthetics of photography in order to improve their photography since this is such a powerful tool that's always in your pocket now. The story with video is the same. Excellent, crisp video quality, especially with 4K 60p video which allows for smooth panning. The optical image stabilization is also very, very good. I found this to be a lot better than the S21 Ultra in this regard. Whilst we won't go into a comparison here, I can safely say that this is one of the best camera experiences you can get on the market. Now a little bit about the LiDAR scanner. I found it to be surprisingly useful. It certainly helps in low light conditions with nighttime photography, but if you've ever had the need to measure any distance or dimension, this is a really handy tool to have in your pocket. I've even made some rudimentary flow plans using an app called Magic Plan, and it was surprisingly easy to construct 2D and 3D flow plans with it. If you have a Pro iPhone 12 or Pro Max, or have not yet tried this feature, I suggest you definitely give this a try. When I was doing a long-term review of the regular iPhone 12, links in the description if you're interested, I listed the battery life as the main reason for wanting to upgrade to the iPhone 12 Pro Max the next time around. And that is what I did. And I've never looked back since. Using two SIM cards and getting more than seven hours of on-screen time, I have never managed to exhaust the battery of this phone during one day. That means starting the day at 6 a.m. and even by 11 p.m. the phone would still have at least 20% of its battery left and by using the low power mode a few extra hours were guaranteed. That means the battery life of this phone is excellent. It will and that is in capital letters, it will get you through a full day no matter how intense your usage may be. Once again, a perfect score. It's beginning to sound like a theme now, but audio is again a very strong aspect of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. This is again an area where you see a major difference from smaller iPhones and even in noisy environments, it is easy to hear the loudspeakers and it makes for a very enjoyable experience watching videos and movies on this phone. iPhones have always excelled at music through headphones and the drivers remain similarly strong here. Although I don't use the AirPods, I use the Jabra Elite Active 65T Bluetooth earphones and they sound very good with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And the connection is stable and reliable. Now let's talk a little bit about the core 
functionality of the smartphone being a phone in the first place. The basics are all good. So the call quality, the signal strength and the clarity of the voice coming through the speakers, through the earpiece and the microphone is all good. Where the iPhone loses out and it's not just the iPhone 12 Pro Max but the entire iPhone lineup is how dumbed down the phone functions feel in 2021. For example, if you have two different SIM cards in your phone, you do not have the simple ability to assign a different ringtone to each number. Also, when using the keypad to dial a number, it does not offer two dial buttons to choose between SIM cards easily. And then we have TrueCaller and the lack of access to the call kit API and as a result, the live caller ID feature of TrueCaller works sporadically and mostly not. The story is similar with messages, although some work has been done in this area and there are now spam filters available, but the lack of ability to change the SMS handling application means that you cannot use excellent apps like the Microsoft SMS organizer that can not only sort messages effectively, but also show you a separate finance section for all your bank accounts and credit cards. Some of this may not ring a bell with people who have always used iPhones, but for people who have used Android phones, this will seem surprising and almost inexcusable in today's day and age. But I feel that it's important to mention this for anyone considering one of these phones and being surprised that phones costing probably 20 times less than this offer more functionality in terms of the core phone function. And we're not even getting into call recording functionality here. That is something that has never been possible with the iPhone without a jailbreak and it still remains true. We're starting to see leaks and rumors about the upcoming iPhones in September. The good news is that there are no delays this year and we will see a launch in September for sure. It is most likely going to be called the 12S instead of the 13 and the design is going to be a refinement of the existing iPhone 12 design. That means a smaller notch and almost certainly a 120Hz display on the Pro models. Apple may also get rid of the lightning port altogether and instead choose to go portless but I'll let you make up your own mind whether this will be an upgrade or not. From the looks of things, there isn't that much of an upgrade this year, unlike last year. Last year, we saw a complete redesign of the iPhone, which encouraged a lot of people to upgrade to the iPhone 12 family, even when they may not have needed to. Now there will be camera improvements as usual and that combined with the 120Hz display will be the biggest attractions of the new phone. But that also means that it is easy to recommend the iPhone 12 Pro Max to anyone considering or needing a phone right now. You will not be losing out much if you decide to go for this year's iPhone. And the best part is that we are now starting to see discounts depending on where you are on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And this means you can get your hands on one for less than the launch price. A little bit about the gray market iPhones here. These iPhones are imported from countries where they are cheaper than India, for example. And because a lot of duty is saved, you can benefit from that saving when buying one. Warranty is a gray area and although iPhones do have have a global warranty, any purchases that you make unofficially, you should be prepared to have a less than straightforward experience if something goes wrong. There are also differences between the models of different markets. For example, iPhones sold in China and Hong Kong come with a physical dual SIM capability and iPhones sold in Japan cannot disable their shutter sound. So even in silent mode, you will still hear a loud shutter sound when you click a picture. But again, if your purchase budget restricts you and you have the ability to physically inspect the device before purchase, then this can be a good option. The iPhone 12 family is a landmark in terms of design. It has gone back to the beloved angular design of the iPhone 4 and 5 families and combined with it much larger screens and the latest tech in smartphones. We've seen countless videos and reviews and coverage of these phones over the past year and really there is very little to dissuade you from buying one of these even given the fact that the next gen iPhone is just around the corner or just about two months away, the iPhone 12 Pro Max still makes sense for someone who needs a phone today. If you're someone who does not want to compromise on any aspect of phone ownership, then you cannot do better than this. You will have to live with the iPhone's limitations, but if you've already made the fundamental decision of iOS versus Android, then most people will be okay with this. The Apple ecosystem and the cohesion with which this iPhone works and unlocks functionality of other Apple devices is the icing on the cake. So if you've been on the fence about the iPhone 12 Pro Max, 
think no more. Go right ahead and make your purchase and you will have great fun with this phone. I would appreciate it if you buy using the affiliate links in the description as it helps support this channel. I have a whole playlist on the iPhone 12 that will be relevant to anyone considering any of the iPhone 12 family models. Do make sure that you check out that playlist or individual videos that may be of interest to you. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next one.